was the worst thing I ever heard. It was terrible. Horrendous. Well, it wasn't that bad. Oh, yeah? Some of the parts of it I liked. Yeah, I liked a lot of it. Yeah, it was good. It was great. It was wonderful. Oh, bravo. More. 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 You are listening to The Micro Effect. Micro broadcasters covering 194,000 square miles and bringing the people's voice to little towns all across America. I'm happy to report I have a new hero today. You know, I have some obscure heroes and an eclectic taste in people. This morning I heard the story of Jessica Holly. Jessica Holly is out of Oakland. And she's a human that stands up for fellow beings out there. She's not afraid of putting her voice out there or standing up for you. You see, a few hours ago, she was walking along the streets with a group of another people. And the police do a U-turn out in the middle of traffic, you know, put a lot of people in harm's way. And they stop, and they pull out their guns, and they point at these two individuals. And then the other police cars came along. Well, hey, my name's Steve O'Brien, and I'm the rabbit. Yeah, they call me the rabbit because I go down a lot of strange rabbit trails. And I just wanted to tell you guys a little bit about Jessica, uh, Jessica Holly. You see, it actually fits into my show really well. So back to Jessica. So she's out there, and all these police cars pull up. And I counted about four or five of them. You know, they block off the whole street, guns out, pointing all over the place. They even pointed a gun at Jessica. Well, the reason I know this is because she had a camera. She had a camera phone, and she pointed it at them. And she started saying, what are you guys doing? Who are these people? Wow, it was crazy. And then she started pleading with them, don't shoot them. Please, don't shoot them. Now, Jessica Holly's out in Oakland, California. They've got a lot of tension out there. We've got a lot of tension all, all over the United States. There are some people that are willing to step up when they see other individuals in harm's way. And we do get in harm's way for doing nothing. And these two individuals were walking down the street. And they might have fit a profile of some suspect on some list for some alleged crime or something like that. Anyways, the cops asked them to come off the sidewalk and look down in the middle of the street. And she sat there, you know, shocked and stunned, and you could hear it in her voice. There's a lot of cursing in that video, too. And I went over the video, and everybody was talking to her about cursing. It's like, look, man, don't tell her what to do. Why don't you step up and do what she did? Take care of your fellow man. Well, she sat there and filmed the whole thing as they got the people that they put in the middle of the street off the pavement and walked them through their procedures back to the car, guns all pointing, pointing everywhere. She yelled at them for pointing the gun at her. Wow, I'm like going, they're going to shoot them. Oh, my God, no, really, they're going to shoot them. Something's going on, right? This video was like 15 minutes long. Well, they continued the video, and she moved through a bunch of different angles because uh, currently the police, right, you know, the law enforcement agencies, don't know how to deal with uh, cameras. They see them as an enemy, something that's getting in their way of doing their job. Actually, I see that a little bit differently than they do. I see them obstructing justice, getting in the way of the truth. And so as a bystander like Jessica Holly, you know, a witness to this event gets out there, they start attacking her, even pointing a gun at her. Well, she doesn't back down. She follows the whole thing. She gets in close. 
right? Gets a good angle, starts yelling at the guy. What's your name? We'll get you out. Give us your name. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. She started asking badge numbers and doing that all thing. Well, I'm not going to go too much into this because i got a lot to cover. And i got a guest on the line, or he'll be on the line shortly. And you might talk about this a little bit. You might hear about this stuff somewhere else, too. I don't know. But for now, Jessica Holly ended up helping two fellow human beings. Her actions and the actions of the other people with cameras around there. And as she panned around, you saw a lot of cameras. And you saw a lot of police fidgeting, going, what am I doing? And they're keeping their mouths shut. They're keeping their mouths shut because they're afraid of the words they say. But when you deal in the truth, you don't really worry too much about what you say. Sure, we might be wrong when we're stating the truth as we see it and as we know it, but we're open to that. And the cameras, they document what's happening. And the audio, it shows what we said so we don't have to rely upon our voice or their or our memory your voice yeah that's the truth what you said is the recording so anyways Jessica and all those other cameras they recorded this guy being stuffed into a car two guys actually got his name let him know he wasn't alone in the universe that somebody somebody had his back Ah, oh, beautiful. Well, anyways, at the end of the video, they took the guys out of the, the car and said, well, we just thought that they were somebody that could be of interest. So we thought it was important to put all these people in harm's way and have guns waving all over the place and create a big scene. And they were offended by all the camera people. <laughs> oh, God. So they call me the rabbit because I go down all sorts of rabbit trails, and I might be talking about one thing today and another thing tomorrow, and I study a lot of different stuff. I usually go down and I find interesting avenues, obscure corners of your life. I'll find experts, and I'll show them to you. And maybe they'll show you something. They always show me something, so I like to share them with it. God, I'm so happy to be here on the Micro Effect. You guys are family to me. You know, seriously, I'm usually at the other end of the microphone. You know, that little speaker that's out there, you're listening via satellite or maybe an AM or an FM micro station. People are broadcasting stuff, rebroadcasting via satellite. It's always been one of my goals to get into outer space, and I thank the Micro Effect for actually allowing that to happen. I'm going to go break up a cat fight here. I have a kitten that's misbehaving. And it's going to need me to, like, rein it in. <laughs> so I apologize for that. Sometimes it's hard to control your universe. <laughs> but you don't want to hear too much about that and my problems with my kitten. Well, I do want to cover a little bit of homework right now. You're listening to The Micro Effect. It's at themicroeffect.com. If you want to call in, please dial 888-747-1968. Wasn't that a great year for Camaros? <laughs> I always like that card, but I'm a Mopar man, personally. But there's a lot to be said for the Camaro. But I do digress. <laughs> So let's go. Oh, one other thing I wanted to talk about. Hey, there's a drawing, and that drawing is this Friday, right? And you can actually win one of those KU Band satellites. All you have to do is, and at this point, you can't mail in money because it's a little bit too late, and you'd have to probably FedEx it. But you need to do this by Friday the 3rd. $5 gets you in. $5 gets you five chances to win. Six dollars gives you six chances. You do the math after that. 
<laughs> I'm sure you can do it. You're a micro effect listener. <laughs> it's great. You know, Rick Satellite actually donated that, and Rick's done a lot of good for a lot of people. You know, I've talked to Rick personally, and I've talked to his wife setting up these things, and they've helped me out. You know, go to microeffect.com. You can actually link over to Rick Satellite from there. I seriously, you know, implore you to get a satellite system. It may be one of the last ways that you're able to get uncensored news if they get their way and shut down the Internet because the connections could go down. They might censor us for our protection. But anyways, the micro effect actually is alive because of donations and because of you. <laughs> I know I'm here because uh, of them, and I respect that totally. And I don't want to do too much stuff too much stuff, but that was really important. For $5, you can get or a satellite dish, and if you already got one, give them 5 bucks anyways. If you win, give the satellite dish back to them. They can re-give it. I call that double giving. <laughs> it's awesome. Well, anyways, this place is really brought to you by sponsors, and the micro effects seriously needs your help. They only take what they need. Again, the phone number here, 888-747-1968. Don't feel, you know, inclined to call. I got a lot of stuff to cover. At the bottom of the break, I'll bring you um, Richard. Now, Richard is the founder of Veterans Against Police Abuse. I'll tell you more about him as I go along, but I really need to give you context for him. But I assure you, he's an exceptional person. And I actually would wager a bet that you are, too, because I know where you're hearing me from. This is the micro effect. You know, I'm going to jump right in. And where I start this story, I am a storyteller, is New Year's Eve this year, 2012. You know, this guy named Antonio, uh, Antonio Beeler. Him and his friends were heading home from a party, and he was a designated driver. And he saw an event that he couldn't stand still for, just let go by. You know, he saw a lady that was in distress, and there were some law enforcement individuals in Austin, and they had pulled her over. And he didn't, see, he didn't see that event going down right, and he wanted a little bit of clarity. So he took out his camera phone and he started documenting the whole thing you know how that story goes right folks cuff and stuff and see you later folks <laughs> they thought so turned out that uh, Antonio well he was one of theirs and his voice would hold up in court he's a West Point graduate yep and a veteran army ranger huh so when they look at who they can throw away or put into the prison system. They look at your credentials and how sticky you are. Well, the corporate media picked up on it, and they threw it up for a laugh, and, you know, the case is still pending. But the truth is, the truth is what I see it. Antonio suspected something was wrong and had the guts to stand up, and he put himself in harm's way. And he went through it well. And after they let him go and said, we're going to go to court with you and all that other stuff they do to you, he didn't sit down and wait for that day. He got up and he did something. He founded the Peaceful Streets Project out in Austin. Now, this group is actively going out there and working with other people which um, to help other people, right? And all we're looking for is people to treat people nicely, and we want to deal with police accountability, you know, we need to look at a lot of that stuff. So, okay, so he forms a group, big deal. Well, it is a big deal. You see, he was actually able to galvanize support. How many times have people started little groups and they're going to take over the world? Well, he was doing it. So when I heard him talking... I was like, wow, so I checked him out, right? I went to his Peaceful Street website. I'm not going to give you a lot of URLs, folks. You can go ahead and go to whatever search engine you want. Type in Peaceful Streets Austin. Put spaces between those words. You'll find his website. 
he was able to generate funds for this. And he went through all the administrative stuff to formalize the group. He got up in front of his city council and said, hey, man, I'm doing this. And you know what? Hey, you're going to have to deal with it. And I'm not out there to screw with you or get in your way. We just want to make sure everything is documented. And, you know, bring peace to the streets and end police violence, because there's a lot of police, uh, police violence out there. You've seen it. We've seen it. Those videos go around all the time. So he raised, you know, nearly $8,000. $8,000. Yeah, he actually bought 100 cameras with his organization. 100 cameras. And he got uh, like 250 people together. You know, and these 250 people, he had what was called the Police Accountability Subject uh, Summit. And the Police Accountability Summit was, um, God, what was that, two, three weeks ago? Yeah, it seems like a long time ago. He pulled 250 people there, gave away 100 cameras. Oh... Uh, but what he had there besides those 200 people were probably 20 other people like myself who are veterans with the smartphones and filming things and stuff. And, you know, they pay attention. And it, it was very, very um, heartening. Heartening is the wrong word. I don't know. I was very inspired. Very inspired. Hey, i got to adjust something. Hold on, folks. Okay, sorry, I had some problems with my microphone. <laughs> so there was 20-so people there that were used to filming strange events and sitting, sticking their necks out. You know, I got there early, and I, I videoed the whole thing. You can find a lot of my stuff if you do a search on one of the search engines for FBG Live. It's called Fred Baker George Live. <laughs> And I'm getting a little bit lost in my story. I'll wheel it back in. Anyways, um, I was there unboxing those hundred phones and, you know, talking to people about what they're doing. And I, made, I met Richard. And Richard starts telling me about some of the things that he's seen in the future. And I'm going, wow, you know. That sounds like John Bush's thing here in Austin. Now, John Bush is kind of like this active person in Austin, Texas, and he's all over the place. And he's trying to reform everything and make people aware of the reality of where we are as a society and some of the disconnects. A while back, he started this one project. It was called the Lone Star Liberty Bell. And when I first met John Bush... You know, I was trying to go, um, God, I don't remember what issue that was. But I met him, and he told me about the Lone Star Liberty Bell. And he said that this was called a mutual aid tool. And this thing would allow you to call a number. In the case of the Lone Star Liberty Bell, you dial 512-34-UNITE. Now, once you dial 512-34-UNITE, that deposits a audio file on a server, right, for whatever you say on it. Now, this trips a notification system that people get on their smartphones or on their desktop or whatever. You know, that will be changing in the future. So this perfect storm of John Bush's notification system that gives you another phone number to call besides 911 a lot of people don't want to call 911 for a lot of reasons. You know, it's not unheard of that you dial 911 and you end up getting strong-armed yourself. You're just asking for help. So mutual aid is about people helping people. So it was out there. And then all of a sudden, Antonio comes along with his peaceful streets people. Now, I've been following him the past few weeks now and watching their exploits as they take to the streets. They've organized with another group that already existed called Copwatch. Copwatch existed long before 
and they've been working through procedures and talking, you know, how do we actually do this? And, you know, filming the police, you can get yourself into very sensitive situations. What mannerisms should you, you know, have? So those guys had been training, and they built on that. And then peaceful streets come along, and so they incorporated that and are working together with that. They're leveraging the Lone Star Liberty Bell. So if you're in Austin, Texas, I tell you, you're an incredible place. Now, there's a bunch of other places in the United States that have these notification servers that you can call and people can react to. I know there's one here in Phoenix, Arizona, where I'm currently staying. It's called uh, phoenix.porcupine411.com. Porcupine 411 were the ones that actually built the server, and they built John Bush's server. And, you know, he's rebranded it, the Lone Star Liberty Bell. It's a very useful thing, but it needs to get a critical mass or something that somebody that actually listens to it to come online. So before I left uh, Texas on this little adventure I'm on, I went to the airport with a friend to drop him off. And I saw on the side of the road, I saw the police pulled over, newly armed with this information. I wanted to test it. So I turned around, and I went over there, and I looked, and I watched, and I called. I called 51234-UNITE. <laughs> And it was very innocuous, and I didn't have time to video the whole situation. I was pretty sure that it was all going to go okay, and that might have been my bad. But I called it in. I got a text message a few minutes later. Somebody going, hey, hey, are you okay? What's going on? Wow. How about that for stimulating your soul? This system's actually coming together. <laughs> well, Richard, uh, from Veterans Against Police Abuse, he's an active serving uh, military person. And he's been the subject of police abuse in the, in the past. That's why he founded Veterans Against Police Abuse. They came together and they said, you know, most police abuse happens in the car, so maybe we should focus on the car first, and then we can move on. So what would we want in a car? Well, first of all, you want cameras, right? You want microphones, okay. And you want the, the information stored off the car. So they went ahead and they built this car, and it's a beautiful car. I saw it over at the Police Accountability su uh, Summit. Now, I'm not talking beauty as being, you know, red with awesome wheels. It's very plain, kind of sporty looking, but the beauty in it is the protection it offers. And when I say protection, I'm really not talking about, about the protection of having bulletproof glass or, you know, armor-plated doors and body panels and all that. You know, and he said, that's a little excessive, I know, but, you know, since we were going that route, we wanted to make sure we cover the whole thing. They went as far as putting a smoke, uh, <laughs> smoke screen in the back. He came under fire earlier this week, and if any of you are uh, members out there of the Glock Forum, um, they've been laughing at him, the little cop corner in there. Yeah, they've been all, well, I want to impound his vehicle. Oh, my God. Yeah, what a criminal. Calling them a nutcase and all this other stuff. They skewed the name of his group from Veterans Against Police Abuse. They skewed it, and they turned it into Veterans Against Police. And they say, well, well I can't wait to, I don't know what they say. Who cares, right? The first person sat there and changed the name because it served a purpose. They didn't get it right. And they all built upon it. It's us versus them for some of them. 
for some of them. A lot of them are good, I know that. You know, at least, I mean, there's two reasons you get into law enforcement. One, you want to help people. Two, you're a bully. Do they change those people that get in and try to help people into bullies? How much can you sit there and go along with some of the stuff you get into? I've heard from a lot of, you know, ex-law enforcement that they couldn't just hang there. In fact, in 2007, when I was doing the Ron Paul thing, I was sitting out in front of the Civic Auditorium there holding up this huge Ron Paul banner. I mean, it's like 12 feet tall and 20 feet long, and it said, Ron Paul Revolution. And I stood there while we leafleted and handed out stickers because Obama was coming to town. And we thought that it would be good. We could actually convert some of those Ron, or, uh, supporters of Obama into Ron Paul supporters. But we found that was a futile thing. But we still kept doing it because it was the right thing. We needed to get our message across. Well, me and this other guy held the sign, and you sit there and hold a PVC pole for a long time. You get to talking a little bit. And then he told me that he was a police officer in Hayward. And I said, whoa. And he says, yeah, I know. And I said, well, how's that work out for you? And he says, a lot of people don't like the police. And I'm all, no kidding. I'm all, well, how do they deal with Ron Paul, the idea? He says, they think I'm a kook. I think I'm a kook. He says, tell you the truth, if I don't, you know, if this doesn't happen with Ron Paul, I don't know what I'm going to do. You know what happened with Ron Paul. Now, I doubt that person was with the police department anymore. Oh, I doubt it. But maybe he is. Is he still a good cop? Well, I looked into his eyes, and you can see a lot in a person's eyes, and I heard him. And it hurt me when another person came around and said, look at all these cops, those blah, blah, blahs, they're uh, uh, right next to him. And he sat and he took it. He didn't identify himself as a cop. And I had true empathy for him because he knew what that guy was saying and what his feelings were. God, there are so many stories. But this isn't about police abuse. This is about accountability and what you can do. Because truly, we ain't getting past this, folks, without you and me working together. Our country's in a world of hurt right now. And you know it. There's so many ways, so many fractures in our societal fabric. Collapse can happen just any directions, but ethics, ethics is important. It's important that you talk to people about your ethics and what's important. It's important to talk to people and listen to what they have to say. You truly are one of the most important things out there. Well, the micro effect's pretty important, too. I kind of like the place. Hey, Dad. Hey, buddy. How come we have a bunch of emergency food stashed in a basement? <laughs> well, it's down there because there are things going on in the world that concern me that I think could potentially interrupt our food supply. And if that happens, I don't want us to starve. You mean we could, like, go to the grocery and there wouldn't be anything in there? Oh, yeah. Wow. There's a lot of ways that could happen. And if it does, there a bunch of people are going to starve. And it's my job to make sure that you don't. Thanks, Dad. And I don't want to starve either. <laughs> and that's why we got food from the freeze-dry guy. It's the best long-term storage food you can get. And if it comes to that, we'll be ready. Dad? Yeah? Some people say you're kind of a crackpot, but you make a lot of sense. <laughs> well, thanks, I think. 
Get your supply of the best long-term storage food available. Call 866-404-3663 or go to freezedryguide.com. America, politicians are about to vote on the creation of a police state and a permanent state of war everywhere on Earth, including the homeland, Mein Führer. The U.S. Senate will be voting on a bill that will give this president and every future president the power to order the military to pick up and imprison, without charge or trial, civilians anywhere in the world, including America. Illuminati. Let's just go over that again because it may seem insane or unhinged at first. The American president wants the power to arrest and detain anyone, anywhere, indefinitely, without charge or trial, forever. Hmm, yes, it still sounds insane. Camping, hiking, backpacking. Alice Packs, military surplus, tactical gear. The list goes on and on and on. You can find it at CJL Enterprise. That's E N T E R P R I Z E dot com. You can call us at 816 359 7945. We are open seven days a week, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year on the web. Again, it's CJL Enter E N T E R P R I Z E dot com. CJL Enterprise dot com. You can call us at 816 359 7945. CJL Enterprise. Concerned about the cost of quality water purification? Berkey Water dot com. Concerned about microorganisms in your water? BerkeyWater.com. Concerned about unknown chemicals in your water? BerkeyWater.com. Want information about water in the news? BerkeyWater.com. That's BerkeyWater.com. Or call 888-803-4438. That's 888-803-4438. Berkey, because the water you drink may not be as clean as you think. The microeffectlive.com. Undistorted truth. Talk hosts that blow the horn on the Matrix world. Welcome to the microeffectlive.com. Say goodbye to fake news. Say goodbye to fake radio. Welcome to the microeffectlive.com. The intelligent source for news, updates, and of course, the truth. Okay, well, I guess I'm back. Hey, I guess we got Rick on the line. Um, hey, Rick, you there? Sure am, Steve. How neat is that? Hey, I should have known you were somebody special when I was sitting there unboxing uh, cameras with you over at the police accountability subject. You know, I was quite amazed when I walked outside to take a look at that car and I saw you there talking about it. Um, tell the folks a little bit about your car. Okay. Um, first, I gotta gotta do it. Just gotta say uh, that my views are all personal, and they don't represent the views of the Department of Defense. Um, but my car, uh, the car is the test bed for Veterans Against Police Abuse. Um, it's my own personal car, and it obviously serves my own personal purposes. But more broadly than that, um, I'm using it to uh, you know try out different technologies. And, uh, and hopefully, you know, offer those technologies or at least, you know, our thoughts on them um, to other Americans who, you know, are interested in the truth and preserving the truth and protecting themselves against people who lie. Hmm. Yeah, the truth is awesome. 
<laughs> hey, tell me about some of those technologies. I'm really interested in the audio and the uh, video streaming, but you did have like a, a little bit of stuff you wanted to go over, and I don't think we have too much time, but anything you can give us, man. Okay, yeah. Uh, three technologies come to mind right off, uh, right off the top of my head. Uh, the first one is uh, pretty simple, something that a lot of people carry. They're smart devices, of course. We see that more and more every day. Uh, using apps that stream like Bambuser or Quick, um, or I believe Ustream does the same thing. Those apps are great because they're simple, they work well, and then they also secure the evidence on a server that can't be accidentally or purposefully lost. So that's the first technology that really everybody should have. Um, okay. The second technology is a little bit more uh, uh, comprehensive, but it doesn't secure the evidence, and that's something called a Jowtech ADR3320. And they have uh, various mm -hmm. models of this. So basically, it looks like a radar detector. Plugs in your cigarette lighter, just like a radar detector. You mount it on your windshield, like a radar detector. Uh, it has two cameras in it, wide angle, night vision built in, and it records audio and video, uh, both out the front of your vehicle and the interior of your vehicle. Not only does it do that, but it also records your GPS position and speed. So if... Uh, you know, you're, you're pulled over and, uh, and the, the reason for it is, is speeding and you don't think that's the case, uh, you have some evidence to back yourself up. Um, there's some good things about that ADR too and, and the fact that while it records to an SD card on the camera, you can also rig it so that it, it, it you know, uh, records to a USB drive that you can hide in your car. Uh, so it, it has an, uh, a little level of protection from that whole disappearing evidence thing. Hmm. Um, and that's about four to five hundred dollars for that Jowtech ADR. Um, okay. Now, the system that my car uh, also has is that it's called a Protect All DVR, and uh, it's made uh, by uh, ProtectAllSecurity.com. And what that is is it's a DVR. It's a mobile DVR that's in the back of my car. It's mounted, so it's great for driving. It, the temperatures don't affect it, and it records. In my case, eight channels of audio and eight channels of video, but they also have some that are cheaper that offer four channels of audio and four channels of video, and then they have ones that are bigger. And that allows you to put cameras wherever you want, in or outside of your vehicle and microphones, and record uh, video and audio evidence that way. In addition, uh -huh. it wires into your car, so it'll record if your turn signals are on or off, if you're braking, if you're reversing, doors open. All this data can be recorded, and the great thing about it is it's connected to the Internet so that you can actually stream your data to a remote server to secure it. Now, my system's got eight uh, audio and video channels, and uh, it, uh, the whole system, and I'll give you the uh, last couple of components of it, that whole system runs about $4,000. Um, now, the, the other component that's in my system for the 4000 it's also sold by Protectall, is a rear view mirror called the AV360. This rear view mirror looks like a regular rear view mirror, but it has four cameras inside of it and one audio microphone. So it'll record <laughs> oh, out wow. the front of your vehicle the interior of your vehicle, and then it has pinholes on either side that will get your passenger and driver's side windows. The last component in my protect-all system uh, is a wireless microphone that sits in a charger. Pull this uh, thing out of the charger. It's about the size of a beeper, if you can remember those. Pull that thing out, press the button, and now it's wirelessly recording audio and sending it back to that same DVR. So all of those capabilities will run you about $4,000 give or take, and again, that's protect all security. Mm. Hey, um, one of the neatest things that you told me about was your concept of the your future plans for what you call iCitizen, which, you know, we kind of refer to, or at least I hear referred to as a mutual aid network or some kind of a network. So somebody actually becomes with you. The way that I've seen that is like, let's say you're in a traffic stop, you get pulled over, and perhaps in this scenario you have a LCD a video screen behind the driver's door. Right, and so as that officer is like coming up, you've already sent your alarm to your mutual aid network, and somebody 
a representative for you comes up on the, the rear screen and says, hey, officer, hey, don't talk to the driver. You're talking to me. What's your business here? Are you detaining him? You know, it goes through that whole step, right? You know, and like what you were talking about, your DVR, streaming all that important information out in the Internet. You know, in the near future, we're going to be able to come to the aid of people, and it'll either be a, um, a community-based network where we sit there and we review the information, right? If an officer says, you know, we're at a stop sign, you just ran that stop sign, right? Right when you stop. We're running a background check on the law enforcement agent. We're doing all sorts of things. And when he makes that claim, we can check it. And then we can have your, you know, um, your talking head, with the lack of a better word, that informed you that all these important people are listening and everything that he's saying is being recorded for his own safety. Um, and he's got to watch his words right now because you didn't run that stop sign. And what he's doing right now is making something up. Now, this won't necessarily be a problem if they didn't make something up. But unfortunately, right now, a lot of people and you know see the truth a little bit differently, and maybe they're not aware of stuff. Tell me about iCitizen. What what's your concepts yeah. on that? Yeah, it's great. You know, the two things there that are key um, is technology and securing it the evidence, and the other one is community. And so uh, something similar to the great work that uh, John Bush and Porcupine and other uh, great Americans are doing out there is something that we're, we're drawing up and we hope to actually launch called the iCitizen. I'll just tell you how it would be used and uh, instead of going through all the nuts and bolts of uh, what the app does. But uh, let's say you're driving down the road, you've got your smart device, and you see the uh, siren in the back of your, uh, your car. So you press one button. There's just one big button on the application, and that does a couple of things. The first thing it does is it starts recording audio and video. The second thing it does is it connects to our remote server, iCitizenHQ.com, and it knows your account. It knows who you are. It's been previously set up. And in that account, you put a list of people in your personal network. You've got their cell phone numbers in there, their email addresses. So the app starts videoing. And then it sends out all these emails, kind of like what the Liberty Bell does, to a bunch of individuals in your network saying, hey, something's going on. If you can, click this link and meet up in a chat room. So people who have the time will click on that link. They meet up into a dynamic chat room. In that chat room, they are listening to the streaming audio video of what's going on. In addition to that, the software We'll know the person's location, and we'll put up a list of media contact information, uh, agency contact information for supervisors nice. and such, so that everyone has that information readily available. Now, the person who's the driver, at this point, he's hit one button, and that's it. Now everyone's right. listening. And they have this software in a chat room that's delivering to them information that's critical uh, you know, for connecting the loop. That is to say, if things start to go south, they can reach out and touch that police officer and let them know, hey, you're being watched right now. Public servants will act like public servants when they know the public is watching them. Well, that's, oh, the, that's really the whole thing with the iCitizen. A lot more nuts and bolts to it, but uh, I won't bore you with those. But basically, we're going to take technology and community to add those things together so we can watch each other's backs. That's great. Hey, thanks for joining us. I know your time is really limited. You're going to join me again on Sunday night, you know, on my regular show. Is that correct? That's correct. It sounds great, and I uh, appreciate you having me on, Steve. Hey, man, and always love to talk to a hero of mine. Thanks, Rick. You bet, bro. <laughs> man, I only got an hour here, and I enjoy every minute of talking that I can. Talking on the micro effect is like coming home, except this time I get to talk, not just listen. I listen to a lot of the hosts on this network, and, you know, if you're listening to this network for the first time, you really need to listen to some of these people. You know, one of my favorites to listen to is, of course, Joe McNeil. He's coming up in a few hours, I do believe. 
you know, I'm also a new host that's coming online is um, Chuck Smith. He's coming up in a couple hours, and he talks on the, the Smith Fix. He's been talking for a while. He's one of my heroes because, A, he talks. He has a point. He says what he, you know, thinks, and then he'll listen, and then he'll make a judgment. That's one of those things that we've lost as a society, that listening point, actually hearing without trying to figure out what we're going to tell them or how we're going to justify what we're doing. God, I figured that out a while ago that, you know, i got to get out of my head. And I'm still working on that. Well, I hope you enjoyed this rabbit trail. You know, the story's not over as far as, you know, what's going on with... Antonio Beeler and the Peaceful Streets Project. Oh, folks, it's just started. You know, once this thing hits and the ignition hits, was today, you know, the story that I opened with, what's her name again? Ah, uh, yes, that was Jessica Holly. Yeah, she used this service that um, Rick was talking about. It's called Bam Bambuser. Dot com. That's spelled B-A-M-B-U-S-E-R dot C-O-M. Yeah, you can see that, right? You know, if you go to your search engine and if you want to take a look at that video, it's very inspiring to me. Oh, it's very inspiring. Do a search on pound O-P-D space guns space out and then... Uh, explanation point, explanation point, and I call those bangs because I'm a computer geek. Do a search on that. My site is fbglive.com. Now I don't update it all the time, and I didn't have time to update it. I will update it, and I'll put some of that stuff up there. But, you know, a lot of this work, you know, I'm everything, man. I got to be alive figure out interesting things, schedule guests, do all this other stuff, and I'm overwhelmed, so I have to let some things go. So I'm going to throw it back on you. You can sit there and do the searches. I'm not going to give you a lot of URLs because URLs are really hard, and they take up a lot of time. So use whatever search engine you want. If you want to talk about search engines, maybe we'll talk about that in a future day if I end up staying with the micro effect. My intention is to do just that. But we'll see, because this is Joe's network, and this is, you know, his family's network. And I have so much respect for him that I go along with anything and still say I love you. Because that's the way we should do that, right? Because authority and control, you know, who's in charge? Who's in charge? Well, Joe's in charge. And, yeah, and I want this to be successful. I don't know. I, I've been talking to Antonio Beeler, and I was going to get him on my show that's out on the interweb. You're going to have to search for it. I'm not promoing me. Um, you'll have to search for it. But I will bring him on here and let you tell him or let him tell you his story if I end up staying with you folks. And I got a few other people in the back pocket I've just kind of like been juggling and saying, hang in there, folks. I tell a lot of stories, and it's not all about, like, police abuse and stuff like that. This isn't about police abuse. Let me get that straight. What I'm talking about here is personal responsibility. It's with standing up for your neighbor, even though you don't know him. What Antonio Beeler did that night was he saw something he perceived was wrong, and he stood up for a fellow human being. What Monica did, you know, exceptional, standing in the face of violence, authority. And if you don't believe that the police are violent, well, hey, I guess you framed it a little bit different. Because whenever you call the police on any situation, they have guns. And if it goes awry, they're trained to use them. Now, I'm sure they're really just in the case of, let's say, Jessica Holly over in Oakland a few hours ago because they've been trained to handle a situation like that, to take those 
humans and drag them into the middle of the street, and there's traffic all around. Oh, my God. And, you know, they stop their car in some tactical strategy, and, you know, they practice this. They have a parking lot, and they do their maneuvers. It's beautiful. They're playing cop, and it's for their safety. But how many times did they put people in harm's way? All those weapons flying around, and those safeties aren't off. They're not off. This morning I was really upset. You know, I have a, um, a tendency to walk places where they listen to the corporate media channels. And I heard something. Something that was brought up on my last week's show on ethics and accountability. My co-host Frankie brought a story to my attention of a 12-year-old girl that was tasered in a Victoria's Secrets um, store. And he went on to tell me about, he doesn't know where to start with that problem, like why is a 12-year-old girl in Victoria's Secrets? But let's get past that. The police were going to Victoria's Secret to pick up the mother. Now, why did they go there to pick up the mother? Or did she work there? How did that happen? Were they finding her via her cell phone? Is that what they do nowadays? Make no mistake, folks. They know where you are when you have a cell phone. I used to work for a wireless carrier. You probably know them. They're, they're called Verizon Wireless. And in the 90s, the FBI and the CIA, they were all bugging on us. They were all saying, hey, we need access to your switch data. It's called SS7, Circuit Switching 7. Now, this gives them the, um, it gives them which cell site that you're connected to. It gives them the strength of the signal. With that, they can calculate where you're at. Now you've got GPS data as well and blah, blah, blah. Well, the cellular carrier Verizon was sitting there going, oh, you guys are smoking something because what you're talking about is a lot of money. We're going to have to replace all of our switches. You know, that's just too much. Too much. Remember that thing called 9-11? Yeah, it changed a bit, huh? Well... Yeah, I don't know where to go, man. There's so many avenues from there. That happened. Lots of money were freed up, taken out of our pockets, thrown into the cellular carriers. Hey, they got new switches. Now they got pipes right into the cell sites. They can pull all the data they want. And it isn't eavesdropping or surveillance anymore. You know, there's enough acts out there to allow them access to it, and they can justify it. Who cares? I used to work right across the street from the central office where the domestic wiretapping thing went on. When somebody came out of you know the closet and said, hey man, they got a room at 303, I guess it was 302 Second Street. They got a room in there where they're grabbing the main internet pipes and they're focusing them to one central server and they're reading and listening to everything everything and they're not just doing that in San Francisco no they're doing this at all access points around the country so when you sit there and say don't use Google because it's not secure and they're spying on you let me tell you something they don't care who you use. They don't. They're watching. You could encrypt it, use an SSL encryption. You can use any encryption you want. 256 bits of security. Ah! Do you think they can't break that? No, you don't. Truth is, if they came out and told you that they have been able to break it for years. For years. You'd believe it without a heartbeat. Because our government doesn't tell the truth, and it's for our own security that they do that. Yeah, it's for our own security that we beat people over the head, they tell us. But it's not. And you know what security? is when you use your voice, and you step up, 
and you allow yourself to stand in harm's way for another person, even though you don't know them. Even though you don't know them. Because you'd want that to happen for you, right? How would a Ruby Ridge have played out? How would that have played out if people didn't actually show up and cared? Well, Ruby Ridge happens daily, folks. It's subtle. It's so subtle. We go through compliance training. Get down on the ground. Obey. Talk. Don't talk. Fill out this form. Please sign on the dotted line. Yeah, I'm ranting right now. But it's okay. These things are very emotional and they touch us deeply. And I know you care. Because you're listening to the micro effect. Now, folks, I'm going to do another pitch. Because you need to support this network. Because it's important. Everything that I've said is important. And you know it. You can contact Micro Effect by phone line and make donations via, via credit card. You can also sit there and send them checks and money orders. You can do it all sorts of way. I know a lot of you don't have connections to the interweb. And you're listening via satellite off-grid and all that other stuff. Well, they got a, uh, they get an address, too, that you can go ahead and mail stuff to them. And I'm going to go ahead and give you that. You send any kind of donations to Joe McNeil, P.O. Box 164, Kemi, Idaho, 83536. Kemi is spelled K-A-M-I-A-H. You also might want to check out some of the sponsors and let them know that, hey, um, you heard about them from the micro effect because they need it too. I know because, hey, I live on the very grace of God and by my sponsors. And I don't have many of them because I'm kind of like one of those people that I don't like taking money from people because they think they can, you know, have authority over what I say. And then I'm trapped. I'm their slave, my local slave. And I need to be free. We need to be free. Hey, Steve O'Brien. You're listening to Rabbit 8911. Love you. Ronnie McMullen here for Life Change Tea. It's officially the new year, and the new year resolution should be going into effect. In the order of importance, health should be at the top of the list. We invest in how we look, and we invest in what we drive. And so why not invest in who you are and how you feel? Insecurity can manifest from a poor self-image. Life Change Tea is here to help. Cleanse your body. Receive more energy and start promoting your body to a new you. Physical health promotes mental health. Read the numerous testimonies on our helpful website. Are you ready to change? Are you ready to order? Log on to GetTheTea.com. That's GetTheTea.com. Or you can call us at 928-308-0408. Here it is again, 928-308-0408. There's no waiting. Call now. It's your life. Give yourself something special. Good health. Life Change Tea at GetTheTea.com. Now you can feel that squeaky clean sensation like none other with Vitamer Toothpaste and Mouthwash. Vitamer Toothpaste and Mouthwash is a unique natural formula not found in any other oral care products. With a gentle combination of zinc, folic acid, myrrh, and clove oil, Vitamer effectively whitens teeth, removes plaque, and freshens breath, and it does it naturally without any harmful chemicals. Visit us online at Vitamer.com. That's V-I-T-A-M-Y-R.com. Or call us today to place your order at 1-888-558-8482. 
That's 1-888-558-8482. Keep your teeth and gums healthy with Vitamur toothpaste and mouthwash. Vitamur, nature's answer to healthy teeth and gums. And remember, it's all completely natural. Available at participating health food stores nationwide. Introducing the new...